Welcome to the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on the Grueling Crew Sports Network. I'm your co-host for Indiana Basketball Weekly, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host. First up, 1981 National Champion, member of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, Steve Risley. How you doing tonight, Steve? Hey, doing okay. Um, hanging out, watching football, watching basketball. 75 and sunny here today, once again. God, I knew it would be 75 and sunny. And somebody that's <laughs> living somewhere where it's not 75 and sunny, Former Indiana yeah. Hoosier, Big Ten champion, <laughs> Colin Hartman. How you doing, Colin? Yeah, I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing today? All right, and we are here to recap Michigan's 74-63 to win over the Indiana Hoosiers, snapping Indiana's seven-game win streak. Um, none of us have talked about this game, so I'm just going to get everybody's initial reaction from this game. And mine is, it's just hard to win a game when you start off from behind, and I know this was our biggest worry, Colin, and when you get Romeo Langford and Jawan Morgan with two fouls each that early in the game, it's hard to play with a team like Michigan on the road. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And that's that's one that's like you said, that's the main thing that we talked about. That was my main fear, especially going into a hostile environment like that where you get the crowd into it. Um, with a young team, it's just it's hard to dig yourself a hole and not be able to get out of it. And that's kind of what happened because in the second half we controlled a lot of the second half, in my opinion. Um, our defense, I don't know what Coach Miller said to them in the locker room in the second half, um, but our defense to start the second half was great, in my opinion. It was far and away better than we've played in a while, um, especially on the road at that, of, with that caliber of team. But I agree with you. I mean, it's, just, it's one of the things that we were scared of. Um, we just dug ourselves too deep of a hole to begin with and gave them the confidence, and they were making tough shots. And... Um, it's just it's hard to win those games. Yeah, and the other thing that stood out to me, Steve, is this is a team, Indiana, that's usually shot around 50%. I don't think it was so much about IU's defense that it was IU's offense, especially in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the game. I mean, they end up shooting, Indiana shoots 42.6% from the field. They're not going to be Michigan shooting the ball like that. No, I mean, I, I, I must have been watching a different game than you two because I'm, I'm – just disgusted with our defensive effort. We gave up 42 points in the paint. We only forced three turnovers on our opponents. Michigan had three turnovers in the game. What the hell kind of defense is that? It's terrible defense. It's really I didn't. Hey, terrible. you get on Colin. I didn't say anything about the defense other than defense. We, we gave up 42 worse points in the, the first paint. 15 minutes than at any other point in the game. Uh, I, I mean, they're, 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 Colin, I got to ask you a question. Did you guys ever last year work on blocking out? Yeah. You really? Really seriously? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's not translating. Okay. It's not translating. I mean, the, the game was it met my expectations. We started off terribly slow. Um, I thought methodically we played good offense. We, we, we didn't get into the game quickly. We got ourselves in a hole. And we came out and continued to show great resiliency. But – you know, I, what was our free throw percentage in the game? Do we, it was I mean, good. It was seventy-five percent. It was the same. Hey, Steve. Okay, both hey, teams Steve. were twelve Steve. for sixteen. Yeah. Hey, quick question: Are you are you aware that we out rebounded them tonight? Well, okay. That I'm just asking you because your I'm, point is completely right. invalid. If you're going to come at me like that. When we out rebounded, rebounded them tonight, we out rebounded by one rebound. Way to go! Three, three rebounds, thirty-four, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, to thirty-one. By three. Uh, it's de- defensive rebounds. How many offensive rebounds did they have? Um, okay, 11 it was nine. Even. Okay. All well, the way I'm, down I'm the just, bar. I'm, Indiana had more offensive rebounds than Michigan did. What I see here all right, I'm just telling you, is the fact that. I, I can't finish my. I go can't ahead. Finish my go statement. Ahead. Finish your sentence. We don't transition into any kind of help side defense whatsoever. Uh, we play, and that's why we got Romeo and why we got Juwan Morgan into foul trouble early because there's no help. And we get these guys playing one-on-one defense without any, any shifting into position. We've got people out of position like crazy. Um, it's just not there. And then if we out-rebounded people, it's because we probably out-athleticized them. There, there was virtually no block out, in my opinion, at all. I mean, it's what I expected. Uh, it, 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 the game met my expectations. I thought Indiana did fine. They showed they could play. They showed the resiliency of coming back in the second half. But you can't play defense in the Big Ten and only force three turnovers on, on your opponent and, you know, give up 42 points in the paint. 
Colin, you know as well as I do, you're not going to win in the Big Ten if you do that. And But, but here's the thing. Here, here, here's the thing. What this tells me right now, this is what signals it. I, I saw this weekend, too, that Nevada got beat, Kentucky got beat, Kansas got beat. You see, you get into these putt schedules at the beginning of the season and you all think your teams are great. Then you get into league play, and you have to start really Wait playing a good teams. Did Michigan, did Michigan play an overly tough schedule that I missed? Oh, Michigan's a good basketball team. But I mean, when, you know, when, no, no, the point Indiana. is this. You sit there, and you talked about a putt schedule. I mean, do you know what Michigan's schedule was, who Michigan's beaten? I'm so I'm not talking about Michigan. No, I don't yeah, know Yeah, you Michigan's were, because was. you talked about everybody. I know, you made I, well, a generalization. I Mike, I know, I know who they've beaten. They've beaten everybody they played. Yeah. So they're undefeated. So okay, that's a little bit better than twelve and three. Okay. So wait a second. So, L- I, let me get this I, straight. Know, I, let not... me get this straight. Hold on. I just want to get this straight. So, if you play a tougher schedule and you're twelve and two, it is better than playing an no. easier schedule and being fourteen and zero. No, I because think you put when yourself I look in at position... Michigan's schedule. I mean, I, I, didn't they beat North Carolina at some point? But most of these teams, they beat North Carolina. They beat Villanova, who's not ranked now. They've only played one ranked team. So to say this is because they played a tough schedule, or a, a tough I, schedule, my, so did they. It's a combination of things. It, it, it's, it's just another thing. I, I, how many road games has Indiana won this year? We're not playing the Butler game on a neutral court. I don't know how many did they win. I think all three of our losses are on, on the road, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we should probably be putting ourselves in a situation in preseason to be getting a little bit stronger on away courts, learning how to deal with playing on other people's courts in front of other people's crowds. We don't do that. We play all of our games at home because, you know, we like to stay home, whatever the reasons are. And it's, just, it's going to come back to bite you in the Big Ten. Uh, I thought I thought Indiana. I thought in the second half, Indiana looked every bit as good as Michigan did in the second half. But and you had to discount the fact that this is a notoriously slow starting basketball team. They don't start off well, and we kind of figured that we all figured that was going to happen. And they actually battled back and had it down to I think it was six points at one time. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but you know, the, the, the it's the same problems that, that we have. Our our post defense, our our. Post defense transition is just killing us in terms of la- in just a lack of willing to start the game quick. And then you know then Juwan gets wakes up and comes in. Uh, Romeo finally gets going. And, but then we we all said this last time, um, Colin. You and I talked about this when we we did the post game last game. If they do this against Michigan, they're going to dig themselves a hole, and it's a team you're not going to be able to dig out of. This is what yep. this team's facing. It's what, this is what they're facing now. It's okay to do it against uh, Taxidermy Tech or whoever we play, you know, that th- th- we can That's come an back. That's awesome and, and... name for a school, by the way. <laughs> that actually and you know what? Did, I did bet they some... could be Kyle Guy in Virginia in the first round of the tournament, too. Yeah, Taxidermy Tech? Yeah. They probably could. Did you ever watch the Roadrunner and Coyote? That was Taxidermy Tech is where Wiley Coyote went to college. I don't remember. I do remember it being on, but I'm not as old as you to remember it verbatim because I was yeah. probably like okay. a newborn at the time. So but that's what my I rant. see. My rant is yeah. My rant is just it's the same. It's the same glaring problems that we've talked about all year long. So now I got to start saying, what's going on between the coaching and the players? Why is this not translating from practice? to game situations, the wire, we're not seeing improvement. Well, I think we did see improvement because I think this, I don't think Michigan is that much different than Duke. And what I saw in the first 10 minutes was what I saw at Duke. What I saw the last 30 minutes was not. I saw Indiana just, I saw them play better. And as you said, the schedule has not been tough. They haven't played many road games. And I also think this, though. I think when you've got a relatively young team like they do, I don't know why you'd want to go out and get your head handed to you five times early in the season. I think that there's a lot to be said for play. And they didn't play as easy a schedule as last year. They've got good wins against teams like Marquette and Butler. Those are solid wins. And I just think that this team is still young. But what I did see is they made adjustments and they got back in the game against Duke. When everything went bad, it just kind of steamrolled and kept getting worse. So I don't like to lose this game, but 
I was encouraged by the second half. This team is still 12-3. and three. They're worlds ahead of where they were last year. And there's nobody in the Big Ten as good as Michigan. And I think if you play this game at Indiana, Indiana wins this game. No, I, I agree. I agree entirely. But I, like I said, I, I'm just talking about the, the, the mistakes that we're making that are causing us to lose. Because I really felt in the second half, Indiana was matching Michigan point for point, man well, for man. How, how about play, this, Steve? Thought, Right we, now, when I look at this, Indiana – only turned the ball over seven times. They shot 75% right. from the free throw line. What mm-hmm. that tells me is this. Right now, Michigan's just a better basketball team. But I also think Indiana is a team that has a lot larger room to improve. They're a younger team that's kind of finding themselves. Michigan's got a lot of new, new starters from last year. But you still got a lot of guys here that played or at least around a national championship game. So when I look mm-hmm. at that, the fact that we only turned the ball over seven times – when I look at the stats, if you just show this to me and I don't see the game and I see seven turnovers, I see that we out rebounded them, we shot the same free throw percentage, it's just telling me we didn't shoot the ball well. Yeah, okay. I mean, like I said, giving up 42 points in the paint tells me that our post defense still continues to be our, our, our Achilles heel. And anyway, Mike, in 1981, when Indiana won the national championship, of which I was a member of, we went into the Big Ten play seven and five because we played tough teams all the way into the schedule. Yeah, I know. Pan American was play, a play really teams. rough game. I mean, and you yeah. lost to them. No, so yeah. the thing is this, yeah. Steve, you don't win a championship in January, but you prepare to win a championship in April and January. Right. Okay. And a- ask, ask, ask Colin a question. I'm done talking. Oh, okay. I guess <laughs> I won, Colin. So was I right or was Steve right? <laughs> no, I, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing the team. I sound like I'm bashing the team. I'm not. I'm just saying I'm just frustrated because it's the same issues that I, I me personally, of all the notes I took, I mean, I go down the list, I can start reading them off to you. Yeah, but how about No this? defensive rotation, slow how about starting. This, Steve? We didn't have those concerns against the lesser teams the last four or five games. We didn't have those concerns against Butler. We now have those concerns against what's ranked the second best team I've in the I've had country. them all year. I've, I've, I've well, had them all I year. Haven't, I haven't no, heard I you coached. bring them up. In the last five or six games. Oh, my God. Go back and listen to the tapes. I've well, talked I talked about it. I listened to every Both one of them defense. before we did this. Okay. But I really, I don't remember. It, it, it's one thing to harp on it against, you know, a team you beat by 20. But I still think right now, Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, but Michigan, to me, John Beeline, if he's not the best coach in the country, he's one of the best. And this is a really good team that can win a national championship. So losing by 11 at Michigan – it is not a death knell for this team. No, uh, it's not a death knell. And I, I fully believe Steve doesn't think it's a death knell either. I think that we just want to see more improvement. Um, as everybody would like to, obviously, we didn't win the game, so there has to be more improvement somewhere. Um, but at the end of the day, I saw significant improvement because I've quite candidly been a part of teams and, and we've folded and been blown out by 20 in, at Michigan. Um, we've done that at Michigan State. I mean, it's 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 good to see the way that this team came out in the second half. It was not good to see the way they started the game. Um, like I said, we talked about this and talked about this and talked about this. Um, the foul trouble didn't help. Um, and then missing free throws kept us out of certain situations. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I'm not happy with the loss by any stretch of imagination. Um but I'm happy with the way that the guys fought, uh, especially not being able to play a couple guys. Um, I'm happy with the way that Juwan stepped into the zone, had 25 tonight, and really played well and played smart with four fouls. And there are good, there are very good things that you can take out of this game. Um, but no, I mean the end result is going to be, it is what it is. Um, but there are pros and cons that they have to figure out in the film room that they want to fix and prioritize throughout that process. Yeah, and I think you also you, you got to take into effect that Rob Fennessy is not there still. Um, yeah. So in the long run, him not being there could help a little bit in the long run because they're going to have to figure some things out with him without him. And then when you get him back, this should make this team better, at least by theory, shouldn't it, Steve? Yeah, I, and 
Yeah, and again, I, I, I agree entirely with what Colin said. I mean, to me, the, the one I was just trying to make was this was the same way Indiana has played basketball all season, except we did it against a much better team tonight. And we knew this result was probably going to be the case if we continue to play the way we were playing against a better team. Uh, and uh-huh. that's the whole point I'm trying to make here. Yeah, just but that, I, what okay? I see is this. I Sounds don't think like we've played one game this year where we only turned the ball over seven times. I don't think it's exactly I'm... the same. I think some of those issues are the same, but I think some of those issues have gotten better because the seven turnovers against Michigan, who I think is one of the best defensive teams in the country, I think is an, an improvement in that area. Definitely. Agreed. Yeah, so, no, yeah. I, I think there's still but a lot of not, lot of your concerns. What kills, you, what kills you is yeah. Go ahead. What kills Sorry you is giving that. up 42 points in the paint. What kills you is not playing team defense and getting your star players into foul trouble and have to sit them half the way through the first half and then halfway through the second half and not <laughs> keeping them in the game the entire game. It, it's the same defensive mistakes that we make uh, that we that I've been harping on for a long time that are what put us in a situation where against a better team. Uh, you know, a well-organized, well-coached offensive team that has as, as much talent as we do, and I don't think Indiana was out talented in this game. Um, I, you know, but that's what's going to happen to us if we don't fix our defensive positioning, our, our blocking out. Um, yeah, I guess we out rebounded them, but I mean, I think yeah, the, I, the, I, the the thing that that you saw, Steve, and I, I, the reason I think that you're going back to the rebounding thing is because. Every time they got an offensive rebound, they scored. Yeah. We, right. we didn't score every time we got an offensive rebound. Yeah. They were getting put back dunks. We got one from Justin at the beginning. Um, but if we got an offensive rebound, we didn't necessarily score. It, it felt and seemed like they scored every time they got an offensive rebound. It was second chance points. I would like to see that yeah. statistic because I think that's what's uh, the Second chance here. points. Let me see here. So on court points, fast break points, steals points off turnovers, points in faith. Second chance points. We had 15 second chance points. They so only had 12 second chance points. So we actually Dang. did better than them on second chance points too. Yeah, but do you See, also think when, you look that, at the when I watch that, do you it's think it's crazy. possible that maybe there was an eight to nothing there in the first 10 minutes of the game that we had to overcome? On right. The second chance. Yeah. Points. Yeah. It, it goes back to what I said. The slow start, poor defensive positioning, and I guess we've corrected our free throws because the second time that we shot over 70 percent on free throws so maybe we fix that mess um but um you know we, we the thing is like i said points in the paint we got outscored by eight points we lost the game by 11 we got to get better post defense if we're going to compete with michigan yeah oh man i thought indiana was every bit as talented and as good as michigan i mean i i didn't see any any glaring weaknesses where i thought we can't beat this team um that's all not trying to be a negative in here Right, not at all. It's a it's a good basketball. Indiana has a great basketball team. They're good. They're they're under ranked uh, for whatever the rankings are worth. Uh, Michigan's a great team. Going into Ann Arbor, it's Christ Arena is a difficult place to play. Colin, you know that. Yeah. You know, what eighteen times? You eighteen, eighteen, nineteen years you played in college. <laughs> yeah, some will give or take. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Steve was in eighteen or nineteen you know. to get his degree. He just played for four. I <laughs> know. Uh, I like I told when, when the show that you missed because you were in Dollywood. We talked about the I fact that I tried Dollywood. to break the leg and red shirt. I was in Dollywood. You were in Pigeon Forge, weren't you? No, I wasn't in Pigeon Forge either. You'll figure it out soon. Though. <laughs> Gatlinburg, which is right <laughs> next to Pigeon Forge, there. but it doesn't matter because if I'm not even in the place, how could I be at the place? Well, you were you somewhere else. We, we, we discussed the fact that I tried to injure myself my senior year so I could get a fifth year, and they told me no way. They said, we don't care if you break your neck. You're done. You're, getting, you're, not, you're not coming back no matter what. I just think you're lucky you got your freaking fourth year. But... I, I agree entirely. So. All what else? Right. Ask um, the one thing I do think this leads us to, to see if this team is still the same old or not, is the fact that next up they travel, I think they travel to Maryland, don't they? Yeah, on the 11th. Yeah, and Maryland's a team that has some decent wins. Their schedule is terrible. I mean, they did beat Nebraska at home by two. They lost to Seton Hall by four. Um, they blew out Illinois, Loyola, Illinois, um, lost by two to Purdue. This is a team Indiana should beat, though. When I look at this, Virginia went to Maryland, beat them 76-71. to I-, I will say this. I think this is a game that helps us get ready for that game, and I fully expect that they'll take care of Maryland. 
even at Maryland. I expect it to. I yeah. expect it to. I mean, it's, it should. No reason. No reason we shouldn't win that game. I agree entirely. And the well, thing I, about I, I them. We should have won today. We, we should or could have no, won today. We could have won today. We were not, I, I would not two. say we should have won because I don't think we're as good as Michigan yet. But once again, we don't have to be as good as Michigan for a couple of months. Well, we got to be. We play them again in five games. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just so talking we about. Kind of want to win that game at home. I just kind of want to, you know, go to the That's final four saying. or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so they can yeah. beat us three times as long as we beat them the fourth time in a national championship game. I'd be good with that, Steve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my frustration. My frustration is not how we did not play poorly today. It's just that we made the same mistakes over and over again. We have the same weaknesses, and to me, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, so. I don't I don't think all the weaknesses are still there, but I think a lot of them still are, and I think one of those that's going to have to be addressed before Friday is Maryland's good inside. they got Bruce Fernando, Jalen Smith, both yeah. guys that can score some points when they beat Nebraska. They scored 18 and 15, respectively. So they're going to have to play post-defense to win this game, Colin. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think especially with Fernando, he's a big, strong, physical guy. Um, our guys have to be smart. I think they have to do their work early, um, not allow him to catch deep or catch at all. Um, that's going to be involved some some movement on the post defense with the fronting and, and mixing up coverages. And then if you're going to front, you have to have the backside help. And it's just that's what Steve's alluding to is that when you run into teams like that, where we're not going to be able to guard straight up one on one because we're not deep um, in the post positions, um, we can't have guys getting foul trouble like we did tonight. So just having guys all be on the same page, shrinking the floor, um, bringing that backside help so we have their hand to throw it over the top of the big um, if they push them out. So it's just, I mean, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a deciding time for um, Coach Miller and, and, and all those guys down there is um, how they're going to decide to get everybody on the same page, whether they're just going to play straight up and dig on the post um, and just try not to allow deep catches or deny the post and bring the backside help or, I mean, it's just going to be a, a decision-making time for for the coaching staff and the players, and the players just need to buy in. All right, Steve? Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm looking at here. We had zero bench points. You know that? We got yeah. to score on the bench, nothing. We basically zero had about five guys, Fisser and miss a layup every yeah. once in a while. And, and that leads, that's, that's talking about the injuries. I mean, you know, and I know that's a big part of what's going on with Indiana right now, but – I've always been schooled at next man up. You know, you, you, you've got a lot of All-Americans on that team. Somebody, Usually everybody that plays in Indiana is somebody's All-American. You should be able to step up and be able to step in and make contributions when you come into the game, whoever you are. I mean, yeah. we did it. And, and you only had Mick Roberts, Fitzner, and Moore that played outside of the starters. Mick Roberts, yeah. I thought, played you know, a lot defensively. To... But Fitzner, I didn't see really add anything again. Colin, what's wrong with Fitzner? What, what's his, uh, is he just – falling out of favor or is he just not fitting into well, see, the thing is, plan when you play when you play, I mean he fits in the plan um, to be able to stretch the floor and be versatile um, I, I mean especially against a team like Michigan that's very athletic one through four um, they switched it I mean they, the last ever since the first couple games when people decided that Evan Fitzner could shoot um, and people start scouting for it. They just switch. Watch every screen that he sets. They switch and deny. He does not get the ball unless it's on ro- rotation. He does not get the ball as a pick and roll, pick and pop, anything like that because they switch and deny. So it's, it blows up the action because when people switch and deny it, there's no ball screen coverage to be had. There's no decisions to be made on that backside. Um, so it's, it's, it, it breaks down the offense and breaks down the system that we have um, having him in unless he's in the post. Um, which, you know, isn't very effective right now either just because we're playing bigger guys. Um, so that's kind of the, the dynamic there is, yeah, while he's a pick and pop, he, tip, pick and pop, that's all he's doing is looking to shoot or pass the ball. He's not driving. He's not, you know, facilitating offense. He doesn't have to make anybody guard him off the dribble. So it, it's, it fizzes out, you know, when he sets that ball screen. Yeah, and that's why a team like Michigan he, shuts it down. Basically what you're telling us is he's just a limited player. Yeah, I mean, it was great when, when, when teams didn't know he could shoot, um, <laughs> yeah. quite candidly. Yeah. But, um, 
I mean, if he would start taking guys off the dribble, but the thing is he gets guards switched onto him, so he's not blown by any guards. Um, and that's when he needs to roll into the post when he sees the switch. He just needs to start realizing that he is 6'10". Um, and when the guard switches on him, use that to his advantage, take it in the post. And if they come double kick for a three or kick for a drive or drop it into the backside post, if they bring the post to double down. So it's, I mean, you just have to be versatile and adjust. If, if the defense is adjusting to you, you already have the upper hand. So he needs to be more versatile and be more assertive and aggressive and stop doing the, the, the tunnel one thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, that's why he's not getting as much playing time. I guarantee it. All it, right. just, it doesn't work with the yeah. offense. It kills the floor. Steve, anything else you want to add? No, I just, just it is, is Juwan Morgan just a beast? I mean, is, yeah. is, 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 is anybody can stop him when he when he's he gets a dog. After, him, after him? He's a dog. Yeah. Put it like, yes, if he doesn't get in foul so, trouble, I think Indiana could have won the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree entirely. I, which and I bet if you look help, at the second help. chance points, if it's broken down to how many of those second chance points occurred when he wasn't in the game. They probably all were his. Yeah, probably all probably. were his. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So, it doesn't break it down by player, but it does break it down. But, you know, Colin, Col- Col- let me ask you a question because you, you know him and you know Coach. Is there any conversation that can be had with him that could say – can you kind of engage a little bit more than eight minutes into the first half? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we could get him to start like he finishes, we wouldn't be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, that's we true. We wouldn't be digging holes. I mean, we, we would not, but we can't. He doesn't engage. How about this? Do you think that he doesn't engage because he's worried about getting in foul trouble? And he's so worried about getting in foul know. trouble, he doesn't concentrate on actually playing defense the way he should, and it causes him to reach and get fouls he shouldn't. I, I, I don't, that's a great question, Mike. I don't know. My, my view of it is he plays hard defense. He's just doing it alone. He's just, yeah. he's trying to do it by himself and not getting help. And that's your the offense is going to win that battle four out of five times in the paint. So they're do always going to call a foul on the defensive guy. Do we know what I don't the status know. Yeah, I don't of know. Deron Davis is? When you, uh, uh, last I heard he was about 80%. He's got an ankle injury again or something, or, you know, I mean, he's was, yeah, I I don't know, but because yeah. I I think he's a guy that they're missing big time right now. I uh, usually they're missing him usually definitely, and they're missing Tennessee because he just gives them an extra arm, um, you know, an, an extra body to put out there. What did you guys think of uh, Devontae Green's play today? I thought he started off hot. Well, I like him. I mean, I I I like I him. him. I think I love him. I, yeah. I mean. That's that's one of my guys. I love that kid. And if you watch his his, his impact on the defense defensive end, mm-hmm. with how quick his hands are, it's right. it's unbelievable. I mean, you could not drive or pick up the ball anywhere near him because he's going to take it from you. Um, he's got quick hands, and I think he really, really, really helps his team. And I just want him to come into his own, and and you know, I know mentally he knows he belongs in this game. Um, I mean, he's from New York. You can't tell him anything, really. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see him play better because I know he his potential. I know how good he is, um, and I just want him to play. You know, because it'd be good, great for the team, great for him. I just want it to to happen quite candidly. Yeah, I agree. I, I, agree. I, I He's I, my I, favorite player on I, the I, team, I, so. He's he's to me he's the fiery spiritual leader this team needs. I, I, I just you know I don't know what the relationship is between him and Coach Miller. I don't know if, if he's feeling comfortable doing that or not. But he seems to me the kid that could step up and start getting in people's faces a little bit, and um, you know kind of oh, yeah. fire into people earlier in the game because he started the game really good. I mean he was really the all, only offense we had the first four or five possessions in the game. Um. And so, I, but he's getting the minutes. I give, I give him credit. He's getting the minutes and he's making the most out of them. Um, individual stats. I don't even think I have individual stats on you. I'm looking at team stats here. I haven't seen the individual stats yet. What he did. Um, let me see for a second. I can't find it. I don't know. Anybody got individual I think stats up? The biggest thing, and I, I think one of you guys touched on it all, talk, touched on it already, is Devonte just has a swagger about him. He has a way that he talks, uh-huh. the way that he carries himself, the way that he plays basketball, um, the way that he carries himself on and off the court. I mean, 
like I said, nobody can tell that dude anything, and that's kind of a pro and kind of a con at the same time. But um, I think really he needs to be more vocal with with how he feels, you know, in games and you know with his emotions and energy and stuff like that. Just because that stuff is contagious. It's contagious in the locker room when we're just talking and making jokes and and debating and stuff like that. He just has um, has a swagger about him and, and a very um, persuasive and um, opinionated and emotional and um, he just needs to bring that onto the court and I think it will help this team especially um, with a faster start uh, how about this L- let me ask you this question because I think with guys like that it's just like I always tell my kids when they can play a game you know just look at the other team walk on the field you'll know who the best player is and right. Devontae Green looks like a guy when Indiana walks on the court And I think this, I think a lot of times guys like that, some coaches don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. You mean our our coaches or opposing coaches? Any coaches, any coaches. I think if you've got a kid that is that confident, a lot of times it can turn a coach off. I've seen it before. Where with me, I get a kid like that, I'm going to ride him and I'm going to let him do what he wants. You know, it's kind of like the Bobby Knight and Isaiah Thomas thing. Bobby Knight finally right. just turned him loose because with a kid like that, right. you almost just have to turn him loose, let him run your team, and let him get it done. And yeah. I really Green think, point. not saying Devontae Green is Isaiah Thomas, but mentally right. he's that type of a player. And I think that if we would just put him in, and this is why I would probably start him, is because I think you put him in, and I think he is the kind of kid, if this makes sense, because kids that we're talking about with that swag have the ability to will everybody else better, if that makes any sense, because they give everybody around them more confidence. I agree, and I don't think Coach Miller would have a problem with that. I don't think that there's a there's a power struggle there. I don't think there would be. Um, I think that... Coach Miller understands um, and knows that he he just wants to win games. I know he's one of the most competitive dudes in the world, uh, one of the most competitive dudes I've ever been around. Uh, and I know he just wants to win games. He will do whatever it, has, whatever it takes legally to win games. Uh, and I think that, you know, if Devontae felt like having that on his shoulders, he would have to A, be performing in practice, which he is. He'd have to be taking care of everything off the court. I don't know if he is or not. I would assume yes. Um, and then it has to translate into everyday practice. He, he has to be – to be able to do that, you have to be the same dude day in and day out. Otherwise, your team is not going to be consistent. If you're – the guy that you've given the reins to is inconsistent, Yeah, I think that's where the struggle is because Coach Miller knows that – when, when you walk into practice, you know you're getting the same dude every single day from Coach Miller. You know, And, and he can control that. And that's kind of, I think, where the hesitation might be. Um, because you might not be getting the same Devontae every day. Yeah, that's um, fair, because we don't better. see practice. Right, we don't see practice. So that's, I mean, that's all speculation. Um, but I think that might be one of the hesitations, because you don't want to give the reins to a guy completely like that. If, if you don't know, if you don't have the confidence that you're going to get the same Devontae every day, or you're going to get the same Juwan every day, or whatever. Um, so you're not going to, you know, I think that's kind of the thought process behind it, at least in my opinion. All right, Steve. Sure. Anything else before we wrap it up? No, I just I just want to say this. I, I mean, I, I came out kind of on fire a little bit here, and, and I was like, for anybody to start sending tweets to me or hate mail to me, <laughs> I think it's a good. Well, it's a good basketball team. I'm very proud of this basketball team. I think that they're going to be very solid. They're going to they're going to contend for a high ranking in the Big Ten. I don't know that they can get by Michigan and Michigan State, but they're going to be in that upper echelon with those teams. Um, they're doing more things right than I've seen an Indiana team do in a long time. Um, it just what frustrates me is what would frustrate any coach is when you see the same issues causing you issues in every single game. That's all. Um, and to me right now, it's really boiling down to defensive post-play, defensive positioning, not helping out, not stopping the dribble-drive penetration of the opponents. Other than that, they've improved their free-throw shooting. I still think they don't rely on a three-point shot to win or lose. They didn't do it today. They still you know, still penetrated and went back to what they do best in the second half. They penetrated. And they got the ball inside um, to the best player on a team. So it, it, it's, it's 95% good. 
but that five percent is, is going to get you in trouble when you're playing Duke and, and Michigan. Yeah, and we're going to be playing those teams. It's going to get you beaten teams. March at some point. Exactly, it's going to get you beaten. Great point, and I'll end on that. I'm not even going to interrupt you. Let Colin make his closing statement. I'm not even going to say another word for the rest of the show. I am Go done. Ahead. Go ahead, Colin. Let's see if this lasts. <laughs> no, I mean, just piggybacking off what Steve said, I think we're close. We're getting better. Um, it's just frustrating to see a team with this much talent and this much potential to, um, you know, <laughs> as spectators and as fans, we see the game from hindsight 2020. Um, but, I mean, and they will in the film room as well. But And we want to see immediate results, immediate results. Uh, we want to see wins now and the perfect it now. Um, but it's a process, and this team is young. Um, very, very talented, and just we have to peak at the right time. That's the thing that I've learned about basketball: is peaking at the right yeah. time. You don't want to be peaking That's right now. So, you want to be at your right. best when you get to the middle of March. Right, and improvement is good. Steady improvement right now is we just got to keep. We should win the games that we should, and at least put ourselves in situations to win the games that are toss up. Yeah, and remember this, Steve, and you can't respond is this <laughs> by the time they get to the tournament if everything stayed the way it has they're going to have played the number one and number two teams in the country three times possibly four so in the end i think that is a great thing i think the way the schedule is built i think it's been fine and if you would have told me 15 games ago this team would be 12 and 3 and your losses would be at michigan and at duke at arkansas I wouldn't have been that great with the Arkansas one, but I would have been happy with that because it also means that we beat Louisville, we beat Marquette, which are good teams. So I think overall, I, I think this team is in good shape for what needs to be done, especially considering there hasn't been hardly any stretch this year where the entire roster has been healthy at the same time. So nope. they've got two months to get better, to get healthy. I still think this team makes a run in March. Um, I want to remind people that tonight at 9.30, there'll be a special Survive in Advance with me and Steve Risley. Special guest Bill Searcy from the Alabama Crimson Tide under Bear Bryant, 1979 and 80 National Champions. He'll be on the show to preview the Alabama Crimson National Championship game tomorrow night. And then tomorrow's Survive in Advance at noon, it'll be myself, Steve, again with Anthony Servino from the FF Faceoff to talk about this past weekend's college football game or college NFL games, which I know Steve picked against the Colts, so it really means he's not a Colts fan anymore. So <laughs> I want to remind everybody that Steve can't talk either. So also, I think when you look at it, Kyle Guy was ex an extraordinary player in Lawrence Central history, much better than Steve yeah. Risley. Um, Risley's head is also enormously big. So, and I'm not talking about his ego. I just mean, go on his Facebook page. He's got a really wide head. All right, guys, we're going to wrap the show up. Uh, I want to thank Colin and, you know, Steve's here too. Uh, but Colin is a lot better looking and probably knows a lot more about basketball than Steve. But gotta we're going to get... radio. <laughs> we're going to wrap the show up. Remember, you can hear us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the grueling truth. So for our Amber Crummy and Fitch model, Colin Hartman, and oh the blockheaded Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodfaster. You've been listening to the grueling truth where the legends speak. <laughs>